First of all, thank you all for coming today. Appreciate it. This is the State of the City Address we do once a year. It's kind of an opportunity for us to update everybody on what's going on and also to, uh, to recognize some folks. First, order of business today, if I could ask you to stand and, and join with me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Again, welcome to everybody. I, I have a couple of special guests that I want to recognize. My daughter, Kelly Harrington, is here, and my lovely wife, Nancy McFarland. And I also want to recognize our council here today, uh, Donna McBride, Dick Powell, Matt Herman, Lisa Fitzgibbons, and Bob Huddleston. And then I think we have an elected official also from Eloy. Dan, you want to say hello? Dan Snyder from Eloy. Ch and then also uh, school board, Dan. Dan. It's, it's the last name similar, David Snyder. David, where are you? There he is. Did I miss anybody else? Anybody else? Oh, sorry. Robin Benning. Robin's from Queen Creek. Thank you, Robin, for being here. And then um, also, it's Bob Huddleston's birthday today, too, so I wanted to, I wanted to get that out there. So Bob, happy birthday. <laughs> okay. We working? I'll make sure it works though. Oh wait, you know what? Got to turn it on. First rule. All right. So, um, just to kind of go over a couple things, we're we're here in Casa Grande. This is really the epicenter of the Pinal County growth. And uh, it's, it's an exciting time for all of us. Uh, for those of us who live here, work here, play here, uh, we know how rich Casa Grande's history, is, history and culture is. And because of that, that's why we live here. That's why we love it here. We know what makes the city special, and it's all of us. We are neighbors, we are friends, and we are family. So let's take a look at what some of our residents are saying about the city of Casa Grande. Really nice facility, friendly staff, and wonderful instructors. Overall, great place to work out with family and friends. Great job, Thank all. Thank you for your service, gentlemen. Mike has Be been safe an amazing out. Thank you. We need an Casa Grande has the best Very nice. Officer. What fun for us today. Congratulations, Chief Scott Miller. Well done. Beautiful story. tell you that some of those comments that you saw at the beginning of this are just a few. I was, I was uh, here preparing this morning and I had at least 10 people stop me and tell me how wonderful this facility is and how much they really appreciate being here in Casa Grande. And these, most of them were, were, were winter residents, so it was kind of fun to, to talk to them a little bit. I also encouraged them to go out and make sure they filled out their 2020 census, <laughs> which we'll talk more about later. So I want to talk a little bit about the council's top priorities and, and kind of repeat what we call the ROSE, which is really our statement of purpose, that the city of Casa Grande continues to focus 
and focus is on leveraging the current economic climate, the new opportunities, and our strong community to improve our quality of life, our civic pride, and our quality jobs that we have here. Casa Grande is strategically located and strongly motivated city leadership strives to honor diversity, provide opportunities for all of its residents. And by building a sustainable, attractive community, we create a really special place for our families and our businesses. So let's take a look at what some of this is all about. So since 2018, our housing permits have been up 322%. Just to give you a, an idea, so in 2018, we had 250, and 2019, 600. And so far through uh, the two months of this year, we have 140 permits already this year. So if you look also back at manufacturing, there, there, we had a 19% increase on permitting for manufacturing and 101% increase in construction value. So that's a $184 million increase over the, since 2018. So it's been a really, really good period for the city in this last year in particular. Now let's take a look at our focus areas. These are the areas that your council and myself and with the help of staff, we've we put some focus on. It's fiscal responsibility, it's quality of life, it's marketing, it's economic opportunities, education and workforce development, and health and safety or safe communities. So keeping that in mind, um, we, we then put together a series of action plans that go along with this. And this is all put together by the council and is an area that we've asked our staff and the directors to focus on. So let's take a look at each one of these. The first one, always number one, is going to be our fiscal responsibility. Your city is in a great, very strong position. It has very low debt, has a, has a very high uh, rating. And really we want to look at having a sustainable budget uh, that can sustain a 5% decrease if necessary. We wanted to benchmark our jobs to make sure that our, our city is competitive with our surrounding communities. We also want to look at how efficient are we, how effective are the businesses that the city runs, and can private industry do it better? And if they can, we'll look at it. We'll look at privatizing it. So those are the things that we want to look at. Wanted to, again, you, your city has a very strong bond rating. It's a double A bond rating. Um, we also then want to reduce actually reduce or eliminate any unused property that we have. No, no sense in the city hanging on to empty property. So we're working on, we've put out an RFI, which is a request for information to, to the surrounding industries and said, all right, what can you do with this property if we sold it to you? So we're engaged with uh, Chicanos Por La Casa right now, putting together a development plan with them to have them come in and build apartments and or multifamily living so that will also help us in our affordable um, or workforce housing as well. So quality of life, you know, companies around as well as our citizens, um, you want to know before planting routes in Casa Grande about the quality of life for their employees and for their, uh, for their uh, families. So with that in mind, we want to take a look at the top priorities for our quality of life. Our goals increase positive citizen interaction, so we want to survey the citizens, we want to get your opinion, see what you think is important. We're going to allocate 5% of the city's general fund to go after blight removal uh, over the next five years. And then we also want city events uh, that reflect the demographics of our community. We want to construct and improve quality of life infrastructure and facilities like this beautiful facility we have here, your uh, community recreation center, uh, the improvements on our parks. We also want to get access to internet for 100% of our population. I think it's critical, it will be critical in moving forward uh, for our young people, especially if they want to compete in, in today's environment. We also want um, police and citizen events to continue, like our Coffee with a Cop and some of the events we've done on the south side. We want to allocate 
we're going to allocate $200,000 in cleanup, which we've actually done the last two years, to start cleaning up certain areas and take on that blight that I talked about earlier. We concentrated on the south side a year ago. We're working on the west side this year, and I think you'll see a marked improvement in all those areas. Community Services also is investing $500,000 a year on, on all of our parks. We have 19 parks in the city of Casagrande. 19. We're 57,000 people. So that's, pr it, that's pretty impressive. That, uh, and that 500,000 does not include the 8.2 million that was put into Car McNatt or, or the money that was put into Dave White as well. So keeping that in mind, uh, you're gonna see some additional investments and some additional improvements in the parks as we move forward. Um, in fact, on uh, 319 this month, which is uh, next Friday, Thursday, Thursday, I think, uh, they're gonna be doing the grand reopening of the main library with the expansion that was on the library. Uh, along with that, there's an open house, so keep an eye out for that. Take a look on our website. And then on 321, which is the next Saturday, there'll be a ribbon cutting uh, ceremony at Elliott Park, because Elliott Park is being redone as we speak. So the city is also working with Cox Communications to try and improve our, our, uh, our speed and internet speeds at all of our facilities. So you can get online free here at this facility, at our libraries, and also working on a couple parks where we're going to have internet service for the parks so citizens can get on the internet for free. Uh, in addition, they are working with some of the schools. I think that the high school district has check out, you can check out hotspots for so people who don't have internet at home, they can check out the hotspot for the whole semester and take it home and have access to the internet. So we'll continue to work on, on projects like that. One of the things, too, that will help us with blight is this C-Click Fix, and I've talked to a lot of people about this. It's an app. I know everyone has a phone, so download the app. Just go to C-Click Fix, and then you have to find Casa Grande, Casa Grande, or Casa Grande, whichever you want to say it. The, download that app, and then if you're out and about and you see, you see a graffiti on the wall, take a picture of it, click on it, send it to the city, and we'll get it fixed. Same thing with potholes, other issues you see, alleyways, trash that's dumped. Anything that you see that you think you need the city's help with, please send it to us and we'd be happy to, t to look into it. One of the things too that makes Casa Grande quite different is that our cost of living compared to Phoenix, for example, is, pr is pretty low. We have good air quality. We have dark skies at night, which are beautiful stars if you ever get out to take a look at them. As I said, we have 19 parks and 17 miles of hiking trails. We, we have concerts in the summer, which actually are starting this next week. Um, we have golf, we have recreation centers, we have rodeos, we have fly-ins. I mean, if you can't find it and, and are too bored, then I'm sorry. The, other, the next piece that I want to talk about is marketing, and I know if you've ever heard me speak, you know that I talk a lot about marketing because I think it's important. We need others to see and experience Casa Grande the way we see it, the way we do. And marketing is the best tool we have uh, to use a brand and attract families and attract businesses and new companies to come to Casa Grande. Community, we're pushing for a community marketing office that will open this coming year, July 1st, is our goal. So keep an eye out for more information on that. And um, one of the things that we are going to work on is a branding campaign. So this is not the city's logo. This is a branding campaign. And if you'll notice, this stamp campaign with the, with the neon, the neon is for base, because of our neon park, and it's bright. It catches people's attention. This is the kind of brand that we're going to, or we're, what we're going to put on flyers that are going to be in every office of tourism around the states. And uh, believe me, when that's on the shelf, it'll pop and it's going to jump and people are going to see it. So that's, this is just work in progress, so don't, don't panic if, everybody, if anybody's concerned about it. We're still work in progress, but the idea is, is this IT campaign could be used for anything, whether it's Shop It, which is a shop local program, or whether it's a buy it, or whether it's a park for all of our parks, whether they're RVs or, or public parks, or even our, even our business parks. 
So we have, you know, there's lots of parks. Live it, love it. You know, any, any iteration on that that you can think of, we could use. Along with our BR&E, or our business retention expansion programs that we're going to be pushing, um, and really to talk to our community and garner feedback on their needs and insights with, from our businesses. And then next is economic, economic opportunities, always vital for, for this, this community with a transit plan. We've identified funds for the transit plan. We, we will hopefully have that completed within five years. Implement an automated plan, submittal and inspection process with the development center. That's underway right now. We have updated, we are updating the city's general plan, which I'll talk a little bit more about here in a second. And then the development implementation of a water resource plan as well. That's under, underway right now. And then of course, my favorite, the I-10 expansion and widening. Um, that continues to, to move and I'll talk a little bit more about it late, later. Finally, again, just an update. The transit plan will be, will be coming out. Uh, we also have implemented this self-certification, as I mentioned, where it's automation on inspections. It's also automation on plan submittals. So that's under, under works or in the way now, underway now. Uh, economic development monthly newsletter as well that uh, Richard and, and um, Fernando put together. So thank you guys for doing that. I think you're on your third iteration now. If you, if you haven't subscribed to it, you can, you can get it online on the city's website and just sign up and we'll automatically send it to you. It's a great piece. It has a lot of good information. It has videos on it. It even has a couple of the videos that are on here uh, on, that, on that newsletter that they put out. Next is Lucid. Uh, just to talk a little bit about things that are going on. Um, we have 29 manufacturers in this community. And most people have no idea that we have that many manufacturing facilities here. And that's distribution centers and manufacturing. That employs over 6,000 people, 6,000 jobs in those, in, those, uh, in those industries. It represents $1.8 billion in GDP to the state of Arizona. $1.8 billion. That's a huge, huge number. With Lucid, and that's before you add Lucid into this number. With Lucid coming in, they're sitting on 580 acres. At, at build out, it'll be 2,000 jobs, probably about 700 this year, and a $700 million plant. If you haven't been out to see it, it's really something to see. So that, that facility is over 700,000 square feet that is currently constructed. They had the topping out, uh, which is the last piece of steel was put on it a week and a half, well, two weeks ago today. So they started pouring the concrete flooring about a week ago, a little over a week ago. They had all the steel constructed in six weeks. They tell me it's the fastest construction of this type ever in the United States. So it's quite impressive. They want to have a car off by December of 2020. That's this year. So they have hired 40 of our Pinal residents that are over in California working now. They plan to bring them back over in July. Uh, they're actually constructing and building some of the cars, some of the initial vehicles. And they'll come back over in, in July and then they'll start hiring about 75 uh, a month uh, till they get going in December. And then after that, phase two, which actually uh, is starting, is supposed to start this in March. So there's uh, some groundwork that's gonna continue and then some additional construction that will start. So again, at build out, it's 2,000 jobs. So a uh, huge impact on our community. And behind that, there's several other support industries that are coming, I can tell you without telling you their names. So let's talk a little bit about the general plan. The general plan update is an opportunity for the citizens of Casa Grande to determine how they want their city to grow and how they want the land to be used. This is by law required every 10 years. State of Arizona requires every city to review their general plan every 10 years. And basically we identify 
different areas, and you can tell by the colors there, those are the different land uses. And so what we will do is come out to the community. We already have had one meeting. We had 100 people at that meeting. It was a great meeting. And we got a lot of good feedback from that, and now that's been put into this next step. And so what I'd like to encourage you to do is to go online. There is a, an online um, site. It's CG General Plan 2030, or just go to the city's website and look for our general plan and just click on it. It'll take you right to it. And then what you can do is you can actually drop pin, pin marks on this map. And you can say, well, I like this, I don't like that. And so you can give us your opinion live right on online. Now, in addition to that, we will have live meetings that we go out to the community and we'll announce those as well through, the web, through our website. So taking a look at the, at the categories, the current plan has these list of categories on, your, on the right of that, and then the proposed, uh, and the ones that are in red have changes uh, proposed to them, like redevelopment and preservation of uh, important places such as our historic downtown. Uh, mobility options within our city also are, are covered in this general plan. Water conservation will be covered in this plan. We may in, implement water uh, conservation efforts so that now we can then initiate that and ho hopefully save some uh, additional water and not use as much. Uh, new trails, parks, and recreation facilities. Resource management including water and energy, economic development activities, conservation of the city's historic buildings and sites, and then the general plan also contains strategies that ensure the city provides a range of housing options so we can continue to attract residents to our community. So if you, again, you look at this, the rural and downtown and then community quarters have some uh, changes in them. And in here, in all this land use, you'll also find the different density requirements that each land use requires. So this is where that, the density a part of a plan comes together. And then from here then it can actually have an effect on zoning and some other things that are that will come out after this. But again, economic development is key and I-10 is part of that. Uh, the governor in his State of the State address this past year actually recognized the widening of I-10 between Casa Grande and Phoenix as an important issue. So we finally got somebody's attention and uh, they actually are allocating $28 million towards the Gila River Bridge, which is step number one. Uh, they are moving forward with the, with the options. They have met with the tribe, and the tribe has given input. There'll probably be one new interchange between here and I-10, and they're probably gonna have to touch every overpass between here and, and the city of Phoenix. So it's a large, large project, probably in excess of $600 million. If you consider that an interchange today is, ra is running around 40 to 45 million dollars, just one interchange. So it's a big project, a lot of work. There should be a plan out by probably third quarter of this year. So they actually will have a plan. And then I've asked them to come to Casa Grande also, uh, hopefully in May, in the spring, and we'll let you know when that is. It'll probably be before a city council uh, meeting where they will actually show us those options, show us what all the the planning and, and at least how far they've gotten. It'll be one of the public meetings and I've asked them to come down here so we'll, we'll make, make arrangements and we'll let you know when that's gonna happen. Always important is education and workforce development. I've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, the cooperation and collaboration between our high schools, our elementary schools, CAC, um, Arizona at Work, all of, all of those entities, our charter schools even, are, are super, super important if we are going to have uh, a workforce that's ready. And if you, if you have been listening at all, you know that in the next, well, by 2030, by 2030, 70% 70, 70 of all jobs will require either a post high school certificate and or degree. So that means we have a lot of work, a lot of work to do. It doesn't mean somebody has to go to college but we do need to get them into some sort of a post certificate program. And I will tell you, CAC is one of the best at that. They do a great job. They have stackable certificates that they have out there. And it's so, so important. I cannot overemphasize 
that we need a work-ready high school graduates, and CAC, again, has that ability to do that. Um, not to discourage people to go to college, because we need them also. But we need them to come back. That's what we need to figure out, how we, how we can get them back. Again, 700 new jobs this, this year alone are expected. So we have some work, work to cut out for us. Uh, one of the things the council, in its wisdom, actually was pretty good on this because most councils I know back away from education. They don't, they don't approach it, they don't do anything about it, and uh, they, because it's not their job. That's, that's the typical line. But we took a different approach, and that was that we felt education is critical. And I know everybody knows education is critical, but we thought we would also take an active role in promoting education and promoting what's needed. And so I think that, that we've done a pretty good job of that. Uh, I know that all of my fellow council members are active in, in our education system. They attend lots of different events and really put kind of some targets out there. We want to increase the number of baccalaureate degrees achieved by our Califor or California, Cascadundi residents, and then increase also the number of students attending the postgraduate institutions or vocational education. We have a new plumber, plumbing school here in town, if anybody is not aware of that. Um, it's actually putting out, how long is that take, taking? Is it like 90 days? And they come out with a certificate and a job uh, as a plumber. So it's, it's, it's fascinating. It's at the uh, old Votec <coughs> High School. And if you haven't been there, you should take a look at it. It's pretty interesting. They have walls constructed and everything. So it's, it's very cool. Um, also, we want, we want to encourage our industry to, to hire and or offer internships. I think it's a critical way for them to get in touch with prospective employees. It's also a good way for our young people to get some sort of experience. The city is, is going to put its, you know, its voice where, where it should, and then we are going to also bring in at least five interns. We did it this last summer, and uh, Larry tells me he's going to try for 10 this year. So our goal was only five, but Larry's stretching the goal, so that's good. Thank you, Larry. So, again, staff engaged with organizations like Achieve Pinal, AmeriCorps, Career Pathways, Arizona at Work, CAC, Cabot, uh, really have all been working to put together this uh, workforce and, and be ready for, for uh, the 700 new jobs that we've got. And I, I, I really have to commend CAC, and I know Dr. Elliott's here, so Dr. Elliott, thank you so much for everything you do. The, um, the other thing that I'm, I'm kind of proud to announce is that the Achieve Pinal folks have actually uh, gone out and, and uh, gotten with AARP, and AARP has a national program that's actually in 23 cities. Uh, there are only two in Arizona, one is Tempe, the other is Phoenix, and the other 23 are around the country, and we have been awarded this third grade reading program. It's a volunteer-based program. It'll be housed. The city of Cascadia is going to be the uh, sponsor, and our, uh, our library, uh, head of our library, will be kind of running the program for us, uh, along with a, a hired person, and then a whole bunch of volunteers. So if you're interested, it'll probably start next October. There'll be training that comes along with it, and what they do is the elementary, we're working hand-in-hand in hand with the elementary school, they will identify the kids who are having trouble in third grade. And that's why it doesn't start till October, because the school year starts in August, so it takes a couple months to get that put together. And then once they're identified, then that, that child will get two hours of tutoring a week to bring them up to speed. Because they found that if you can't read, by the time you get out of third grade, you're going to struggle with all your schoolwork. And so we're going we're to push hard and, and really make this count. This is just some, some data from some, um, some other cities that have adopted this program. In Philadelphia, the scores of 75% of their students increased one grade level after this program. And in Cleveland, the reading scores went from a, a terrible 13% failure rate to over 51% improvement. So that, that's a huge turnaround and just because of this third grade reading program. So we're excited that it's here. We're excited to get it going. 
And the last of the, the, of the goals and the priorities for the council are this health and safety, uh, or, or healthy, safe communities. So we want to really push in this particular area by increasing our citizens' sense of security. So advancing the healthy community initiatives, and those initiatives include community policing, also the use of DDACs data to identify areas of the community that need special attention, and also having these and engaging some other parts of our community, like as I mentioned earlier with the, uh, the coffee with a cop. Uh, those efforts have really gone a long way, I think, in improving um, our interaction with the community. We've also purchased uh, motion sensor cameras that, be, that we'll, we will start to use to hunt for graffiti artists and also uh, some of the vandalism that's been occurring in some of our parks. We need to stop that. We just spent $8.2 million on Car McNatt and people are, some, I'm sure it's a, one or two, but they're, tra they're really trashing the park and it's really a shame. So again, if you see something, please say something. We, we really appreciate it. Or take a picture of somebody. We're also working on our homelessness task force, which many people in this room are involved in. Uh, we continue to work on that. It has uh, several different pieces to it. Um, it's been, I think, extremely successful. We opened the CG Helps a community resource center uh, almost a year ago now and uh, a year ago we had a thousand homeless folks that we were accounting for uh, 300 of those were veterans and 204 of those were children it's not a pretty picture this year we did the count in time and that number went down by at least 50 so we were we believe that some of that is because of the resource center uh, it's been a place where the police can send people who need help. It's a place where people near homelessness can go and get help. It's open to anyone. So if you have, if you need, if you're in need of help or you know someone who's in need of help, please send them to the resource center. We have a nurse practitioner that's there once a week, so they can get. You know, there's a schedule of when the different services will be there. There is uh, the social security office is there, uh, certain hours of the week. There's somebody there from, from uh, the mental health industry. There's somebody there who can get, help you with housing. So anybody who has an issue, there is access to get you help. So you just need to make sure you make it over to the resource center. And if you'd like to help personally, you can go to cghelps.com and donate. If you don't need help, you could give some help. But they're working with veterans. Um, all the, again, all the social services are there. Um, we also have the ability for them to use the resource center for an address, because you can't apply for a job if you don't have an address. You can't get a phone if you don't have an address. And they do have phones that they can get, you, that homeless can get. So they have access, but they have to have an address. So if also if somebody's not getting their checks because they don't have an address, now they can have an address and they can have the stuff sent to the resource center and we will hold it for them until they come pick it up. So looking ahead, let's, let, let's just do that. So together through diligence and commitment and hard work by you, our community, the city council, city staff, we can keep Casa Grande growing. And if we, we can keep it growing toward a greater and growing horizon. So let's look ahead at the opportunities in 2020 and beyond.
So again, there's a new marketing campaign. These are things that are coming. You'll see that coming July. There's my billboard. I told you I'd get a billboard. <laughs> we, also, we also need, and this is a, a national problem, but we need available, accessible, and affordable housing. We need workforce housing. So you could, you'll continue to see us work on that. We have a task force working on it right now. I have at least two or three prospects that are looking at building apartment complexes and or multifamily uh, uh, buildings and, uh, and complexes here in the city. We have, um, I know, a 15-acre piece that just closed last week, and there's a talk of putting some apartments there. So I think that, that along with the Chicanos por la Casa project that we're working on, um, we're, we're moving in the right direction. We also have 20 boards and commissions that I want to plug, and I, I'm, it's selfless because we need to put volunteers into these, into these programs. And right now we have a couple openings on the Board of Appeals and also on the Board of Adjustment. And I know there's at least two more or three more other openings coming in the next couple of months. So if you're interested, please, you can, you can find it online on the city's website, or you can go down to the city clerk off, clerk's office and she can, she can help you fill out the application as well. Gloria is here somewhere, I know she's here. Just go, go f see Gloria. And just to mark some uh, dates on your calendar, again, starting tomorrow, actually starting today because the website is up and running. The Census 2020 is, uh, is accessible and it all is supposed to be done online this year. Um, they will be sending out uh, surveyors if they don't hear from you, so they will find you if you try and hide. Um, no, I'm just kidding, they don't do that. <coughs> but you can go online. In fact, I did mine today, so you don't need to do it. I, I did it for us. <laughs> so, um, and I even have a picture of the confirmation, if you don't believe me, I, I took a picture of it. And uh, it, took, it took me like five minutes. It's nine questions. It's simple. The only thing you need to know is your address and your birthday and your name. Spring Concert Series again starts this, uh, this next, actually this week, uh, this Friday. Uh, that's at uh, Peart Park, right? Where's my community services people? Peart Park, okay, thank you, Steve. And then uh, again, the new library ribbon cutting will be next week as well. Um, there's an expansion at the new library. They're gonna have the Census Story Walk, which is the, if you have never done it, it's the Story Walk is out in, the, in Peart Park that you can walk around and, and you read a story when you go from spot to spot. It's, it's a lot of fun, especially if you want to bring your kids. And then there'll be an open house also at the library and then Elliott Park um, project should be done and they're gonna do a ribbon cutting next Saturday. Um, I think that's it in terms of events that you should have on your calendar. Again, just to kind of emphasize on the Census 2020, this is a, a couple who are Canadian, and I wanted to play this video for you. They're one of our winter residents. Hi, my name is John Derrick, and this is my wife, Susan, and we spend our summers in Canada and winters here in Casa Grande. We are Canadian citizens, but have chosen to list Casa Grande as our residence when we fill out our census form. The census is a way of counting Casa Grande's population and allocating funding, so it's based on residency, not citizenship. Our community receives funding for many amenities winter visitors enjoy, and also for vital services and infrastructure. The city receives $3,000 per participant per year. So if you enjoy Casa Grande as much as we do, please join us in filling out your census form and listing Casa Grande as your residence starting March 12. Because, because we, we all, all count, count CG. CG. That's right, we all count, CG. Just to reiterate, this will affect us for the next 10 years. 
at $3,000 per person, that's man, woman, and child, for 10 years. So it's, a, it's vitally important that everyone get counted. They don't do anything, they, you don't, nobody will be calling on you. It's not, um, it's private, it's safe, it's secure. Uh, you don't have to be, citizenship is not required. Um, again, even the winter residents, a la Canadians, uh, can fill out the census as long as they're here. It's, it's where you're at on April 1st, technically. So please encourage everyone to fill it out. You can go out here in the hall, right next to the desk. There are two kiosks there that are set up and keyed up. All you need to do is hit Start Survey, and it's, it's right there, and you can fill it out. So I expect to see everybody out there when this meeting is over. Unless you're not a Casagrande resident, then I don't care. <laughs> Unless you have an address, you can fill it out twice. So again, uh, it affects our schools, it affects our roads, our hospitals, our libraries, really all the services that we all enjoy. And again, it will affect us over the next 10 years. So in closing, I'd like to really just thank all of our community partners, uh, all the folks we work with, uh, from all of the folks that have helped us on the, on the um, homelessness task force, to our schools, to uh, the industry, to our, our businesses, uh, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, Chief Pinal, Main Street, Pinal Alliance, uh, our Boys and Girls Clubs that are here. Uh, and, sh and sharing in, in this beautiful community center and, and also working in our schools for our kids. To our Casa Grande Art Museum, uh, the Black Box Theater who gives us uh, uh, the, the entertainment. To uh, the CG Museum and the History Museum. Uh, our Neon Park uh, is amazing if you haven't been there. So uh, all those partners I want to thank personally. I also want to thank city staff for everything you've done. Larry, your, your team is an amazing team. Uh, special shout out to Rebecca and to LaTanya who helped me put this together. Thank you guys, couldn't have done it without you.